Hello, and welcome to Brain Potential Insights. My name is Jan Skye, and today I have a very special guest. Her name is Jane Anderson. So welcome, Jane. Thanks so much for having me, Jan. It's so great to see you. I want to tell people about you. So if I could do that before we start our questions, you are a strategic communications expert. And you've worked with 100,000 people on improving their influence in their business and their careers. Her clients include people like, and this is so impressive, Jane, Virgin Airlines, or Virgin Australia, I should say, Lego, mm -hmm. Ikea, Ikea, Rio Tinto, and Blue Scope Steel. You yourself have interviewed people like Seth Godden, and her, on her podcast, The Jane Anderson Show, and has been featured in Forbes, Sydney Morning Herald, The Age, Sky Business News. I'd like to claim that as my claim to fame, but I guess <laughs> that'd be good. <laughs> and on Sunrise. You were recently voted in the top three branding experts globally and has won more than 25 awards for marketing, sales, and communication. You are the author, Jane, of nine books, including your upcoming book, Exceptional, Exceptionality, How to Build a Brand That's Wildly Unique and World Class. Oh, my gosh. Welcome <laughs> to my humble podcast. Oh, Jan, I'm thrilled to be on this podcast with you today because you know, I think even though we've caught up again recently, you know, we go way back, don't we? Oh, we sure do. Yes. <laughs> do we say 20 plus years? Something, Close. Be something like that. Yeah. I, I remember working with you. I remember being in your, your ESI program. I remember, I think it was at Stones Corner, even from memory here in Brisbane, maybe I might be wrong. Yeah. But does that ring a bell with you? Oh, I remember gosh. the training room and everything. And, yeah. you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I, all, I often refer back to your work. So that's a, a good sign that what you, what you do works, Jan, because it definitely, I definitely remember it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jane. But you're a strategic communication expert. I am. Can you now guess a little more about that, please? Oh, terrific. Thanks, Jan. Well, you know, some a lot of people ask me, so you know, there's communication experts, but what does a strategic communication expert do? Which is kind mm -hmm. of a little bit different. So if we think about communications, we can often think about, oh, okay, how we present or how we do, you know, social media or how we communicate if we're in a meeting, those types of things. That's so kind of you know a bit of a mix of communication. But what I do is I have a look at when I work with people, I have a look at well what are the goals that they're trying to achieve? What's their strategy? What's their what's their business all about? What's their mission? And then I help design the whole communication strategy to underpin all that. So for example, if they're starting out in, and so most of the clients I work with are consultants, so experts in their field. And so if they're, if for example, they were starting out in their practice, then, you know, we'll look at things like, well, okay, we've got to look at say a newsletter strategy. We've got to look at how they come across in sales meetings. Have they got the right collateral? Have they got the right you know, um, whether it's websites and things like that. But then over time, as a practice grows, there's other parts of their practice that need a different type of strategy in their communication. And it can be more around the communication systems within their team. So for example, it could be implementing project management systems because they've got team members offshore or they're working remotely. So some of strategic communications is marketing. Some of it is the systems in terms of how they communicate as part of their team. And what, let's face it, when you're on your own, you know, you don't have a lot of people to delegate to. So you've got to make sure those systems are right. So it could be marketing, could be sales, or it could be systems. And that's where I come in to work out, well, what is the, what is the mix of those things to help that business mm. grow to achieve the goals that it's trying to achieve? So it's drilling it down to get really specific about um, what the individual is trying to um, promote in their, their own business. That's right, Jen. So if you, for example, if you said, okay, you know, as part of my business growth for the stage I'm at in my practice, you know, I want to, how can I get on 
um, how could I speak on 50, speak at 50 conferences this week? And we go, okay, let's design, we could design the keynote for sure, but actually what we need to design is the communication strategy to speak with um, meeting planners and conference organisers and what are the tools and things that will communicate your value so they say, wow, this person is amazing. I definitely need them to speak at our conference. So it's not just about necessarily being a great, great keynote, but a great um, communicator in terms of communicating your value. Absolutely. And, and not just the value to the audience, but I think you're talking about some of the little behind the things behind the scene things too so that it makes it an easy flow as a speaker when it's your turn to speak because you've provided the intro you've provided whatever they've needed in advance you've helped that person be um, valued already before they even open their mouth and talk about what they're they're going to talk about that's right Jan and even like speaking is a really good example because even you know, one of the things that I think it's really easy to forget is that what's the role as the speaker? The speaker's job is to help sell tickets to the event. Now, they're not out selling tickets, obviously, but they have to build enough platform and positioning so that that helps the meeting planner and conference organisers say, oh, wow, that person's going to be speaking at that event. I've always wanted to see them speak. I really like what they have to say. I like their blogs. So it's being able to build the profile and platform enough so that they do get the speaking events because it's otherwise, you know, then people aren't going to come. So we've got to help build that brand of the event and that sort of comes as a part of building the brand of the, the experts that are coming along as well. Yes, yes. And Jane, I know that you run programs where uh, groups of people can come together and engage in the learning as a collective, as well yes. as helping people individually. But would you like to tell our audience about your the groups that you run and how you help people? Oh, thanks, Jan. Well, I work with people in typically two kind of ways. So you're right. There's some people who like to work with me one-on-one -on -one and do some individual coaching, and that works well. But what I really noticed when I was working with people, in particular, people who are sometimes a little bit earlier in their practices and trying to, to really build them and get traction, the thing that I noticed the most was that, you know, doing coaching one-on-one -on -one, early days in people's practices or where they're going through a real growth phase is that monthly kind of sessions are a little bit drawn out and they take a little bit too long and a bit isolating too really so we des I designed a fairly unique approach in terms of um, what we do is meet each week I work in really small groups and but really intensively so I uh, we work together in groups of 10 and we typically have a plan so we know exactly what we're going to be doing in that time in that couple of hours each week and what it allows people to do is to really come together but it's not just oh okay we bring a cup of coffee and we're hanging out for a couple of hours it's actually turning up knowing exactly what you've got to do in that time and you're getting real time help so it's not just you know this is a lonely game <laughs> and it can feel quite isolating so if you're in a small group of people who kind of get what you do you feel a little bit more supported it builds your confidence because you're seeing people around you doing things that perhaps you've been afraid to do and I'm thinking in terms of you're the neuroscience expert Jan I'm absolutely no neuroscience expert but you know that when you start to see oh someone's actually doing that they're they we see themselves in that other person so it builds that confidence to go well okay well maybe I maybe I could do that so um the creativity sparks or the accountability the support um and so as a result they implement and what I found is that they uh, their practices grow much faster because they've got real-time support I'm there with them and they're implementing on the run so it's um, it's um, a different way of learning, but it's very much learning uh, as you're going and it's real time and you're actually making it happen while we're together. So the interventions are not as drawn out, but the momentum builds so much faster. And, um, and but, you know, the reality, Jan, is this is what I needed. That's what I needed when I was starting my practice and I felt like that was missing 
that was the bit that was missing for me. And so I designed it because um, really we teach what we have to, what we've had to learn, I guess, sometimes. And, um, but yeah, I, I think the methodology that um, has been implemented, definitely I found the results are much better and uh, the feedback and the, everything that we're seeing these, uh, that particular process is particularly with women and, uh, and it's just extraordinary. So I'm so thrilled to see the results that they're getting. And that was going to be a question, my next question, but you've answered it. Are they mostly women who are in your group? And you've, you've said, yes, they are. And I can see how women in business, particularly women who are on their own, building a, a business, building a brand, building a company, whatever they're doing, relate very well to other women. And yes. we have become over time very supportive of each other. And I'm sure that trust... Yes and rapport and respect would build with your facilitation over the weeks and months. Yeah, I think so, Jan. Like the feedback that we've had, the ladies that have been in there, some some of the ladies I've had in there right from the beginning, which was two years ago, we started it right at the beginning of COVID because I could see that this is what was going to, this is actually the opportunity to, to run this program that I'd wanted to run for some time. But um, but I, you're you're absolutely spot on. Is that is the camaraderie and the sense of you know and uh, and realizing that there's so much opportunity out there that you know if you've got a group that one's a leadership expert and there's another leadership expert, but we do a lot of work in the space of uniqueness, and so we go well. Actually, you're completely different, even though you might work in the similar category. The, what you offer and the value of your IP, the books they write, the conferences they speak at, and the um, the worldview that each person has is so different. So it's a really encouraging environment. They're really incredibly positive um, and very supportive of each other. But at the same time is that uh, they realise they show up in certainly in the space of I know I've, I've got to show up and I've got to do the work. So they're not sort of showing up to go, oh, well, you know, it's going to be fun to catch up today, is that they're, mm. these women are very serious and, uh, and it's, you know, they don't have hobbies on their hands. These are very serious practices that they're trying to build. But it's not just about that. They're really trying to create really intentional change and to really have an impact, make a difference. Um, and to build something that is a really meaningful practice, not just, oh, I just need to build a business for myself. It's something of meaning and purpose and change. And, you know, and they're really walking their talk. So I think the really the big thing is, is being able to get more women um, having a voice. And the way to do that is to tap in. These Most of these women have about 20 years experience in their expertise. So, you know, they haven't just started and thought oh that'd be nice to do like they've they've generally yes. got incredible experience and now it's being able to take their message and their expertise to audiences that are really looking for their help yes yeah, sounds just wonderful because there's a there's accountability in there um but yes. there's also the support and when we feel yes. supported and respected and valued by other people that's when real growth happens and I guess that's what I talk about when I, I run my leadership workshops um, yes. on brain potential to leaders at right. trying and encouraging leaders to be supportive, uh, as a lot are, but in that space of support and they're going to get growth from their team members. So yes. you're doing it on a bigger picture scale where people are, whilst they're working in their own their, their own time, their own businesses, they're also coming together collectively. And it's it's almost like a collective intelligence. It's just wonderful, Jane. That's exactly right, Jan. That's exactly what I call it, a collective intelligence, because, you know, there's things that they've done that I haven't done. And so they've got the opportunity to tap into others who, you know, has, have you worked in, you know, the um, who's worked in agriculture or who's worked in, aviation oh I have yeah do you know you know how do I go this way or what's the best conference and so they learn as much from each other and there's a vulnerability that comes with that too doesn't there Jan like yeah. you know if you can go well I feel in a place I'm in a place where I feel safe and I feel like where I belong then mm. in that case then perhaps I can try something that you know I'm because a big part of it for women as you I'm sure you do this work with people, Jan, around 
a big part of it is trying to build those neural pathways around charging what you're worth and quite mm. quite often you know we're in un- they're in uncharted territory they've never actually benchmarked you know what they're charging so they're you know they go is this really a thing or if I was to coach them one-on-one you know if I said well actually a program like that is worth 20,000 or 30,000 or 50,000 or we've got some women in there that are doing million dollar practices you know if they were doing it by themselves quite often there's no validation around them that's transparent enough for them to Mm. get a sense of that social proof that that I'm not just having them on (laughs) you know I'm not just you know making it up and I'm going to set you up for failure there's someone else in the group that says oh yeah actually I did that I I sold a program like that the other day or actually this this is how I this is how I had to work with the client and this is how I had to unpack the value this is how I had to do that and I think a big part of it too Jan is I think you know even for all of us as experts is being able to tap into you know how you like to work so and how our energy and our essence works so in my case I don't work with a lot of people I'm not looking to build a 10 million dollar practice and have 50 consultants working for me or anything like that I like to keep things really tight and uh and I I Um, I like to work quite intimately with people so I get my hands dirty I'm in there with a small group of people and that's my sweet spot and I think a big part of it is feeling that you can build you know a a practice and build a brand and a business that suits you and suits your energy and for your you know so we don't have to go and you know, there's all different types of business models, but once you look at your energy and your essence, and I guess your brain potential is that you go, well, actually you can design this any way that you like, you know, it's it's your design, how you like to work. A lot of people would think I'm crazy in the, the way that I work. Um, but what I do know is that it works and I love it and I can't wait to turn up on Fridays when we do our sessions. I'm like, um, because you know, you feel like that you're, you know, um, what is it? Um, McKay checked Mahali who would say, you know, that you're in flow. And I think that's the ultimate um, freedom, isn't it, Jan? Absolutely. How can we best contact you, Jane? I know that we're going to show your website here, but just could you tell everyone the best way to get in touch with you? Thanks, Jan. Yep, my website is jane-anderson.com and there's .com.au as well. So you're welcome to jump on there. I'm on social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, any of those. I just don't do TikTok videos, Jan. I just I just can't. I haven't quite got the dances down, Pat. I don't no. think I can do it. I'm with <laughs> you, Jane. Instagram I can't get around to that. <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. I might do oh. the dance lessons next year. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. It's, it's, I know it's very precious. I value it and I'm so privileged to have had you on, on the show today. Thank you, Jane, indeed. Oh, thanks, Jane. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.